Hello, and welcome back. Today's episode, episode 65 starts us on a new and exciting series of game and watches, which were called the Micro Versus System, and, eventually comprised of three units for the entire range. The first was called Boxing, and also went by the more popular name of Punch-Out in the US, with their pocket-sized version. This game was first offered for sale to the public July 31, 1984, and had estimated worldwide sales of somewhere around 250,000 units. And with blue, green and red consoles completing the range's lineup, Boxing was the first system to be released. Seen here is the cover of the three various instructions booklets, however, all were given the same production code of BX301. Called both Boxing and Punch-Out in different regions, the games were identical except for their names. The booklet goes on to explain that this is a new type of game, one in which you can compete against the computer, or one in which you can challenge a competitor, a genuine two-player option, complete with a handicap system. Likely the most important part of the display information a player will be watching, is the thing they call an energy bar, or what we'd probably refer to today as a health meter. As the bars of energy descend, the health of the player drops, and it is a very good visual aid, however, at zero bars, if the fighter is in the middle of the ring, then they're forced to take a step backwards, if they're already in the corner, and up against the ropes, then they'll drop to the canvas for the count. The energy bar is coupled to the point meter, which starts at 50 points apiece, after that's reduced to zero, and all energy bars are lost, a knockout, or KO occurs. An unusually large section is dedicated to the controllers, such are their uniqueness, it goes on to explain how the cords unwind and how they are recoiled, also the meaning of the red mark on the cords, which indicates their maximum elongation. This is followed up by the unit's technical specifications, and the normal caution statements, before the blank rear page is shown. Also, please feel free to pause the video of the instructions booklet at any stage, for a more detailed reading, as this is a more complicated booklet than most Nintendo game and watches. The very large, landscape display of the Micro Versus system, is nearly three times bigger than the previous, and somewhat ironically named, widescreen series of game and watches from Nintendo, which we've previously reviewed here on our channel, such as the size of this console, and the high hopes that were tied to it for its success. And while the screen seems like it is exposed to unnecessary scratching and potential damage, the actual LCD screen is covered by a hard transparent sheet of perspex, that appears, at least from my observations, to be very resilient and durable. As previously mentioned, Nintendo of America, renamed their units, Punch-Out, after the highly successful arcade game, of the same name, they also adapted the box art to make it more appealing to the North America market. And as an aside, I'm hopeful that 2024, will give the collector fraternity a new homage game and watch, something like this Punch-Out game shown here, and hopefully based on the arcade game, well I can hope right? And back with the Micro Versus system, the battery cover is definitely unique, 2L or 44 batteries are inserted sideways, this is a new take on the previous simple plate that all game and watches used. The lid, which holds and hides the two removable controllers, is used to add several additional, multi-language warnings and tips, utilizing the empty space to great effect. And of course, the correct use and storage of the new, and unfamiliar controllers, are the priority in the messages shown. But let's not lose sight of how groundbreaking this design was, a handheld with two detachable controllers, a feat that would not be revisited until Nintendo introduced the Switch in 2017, a huge 25 years after the launch of the Micro vs. system. And while the Switch, with all its bells and whistles, is clearly so much more, the design's cues and the shared basic concept similarities, is, in my opinion, unmistakable, much like the multi-screen series clearly led to the much later DS design. Surprisingly the Punch-Out! franchise was thought to be a non-starter for Japan, leaving the arcade, and Nintendo Entertainment System to carry the very popular brand. However following a gaming tournament, this decision was reversed. Another interesting point being, both the Famicom and today's Micro vs. System game and watch, share near identical fixed cables. And while the fixed cables work pretty well for the game and watch, the same cannot be said about the Famicom. A very limited number of Punch-Out! games from the Micro vs. System series were sold as carded versions, these are by far the rarest variants in the collecting arena today. Another oddity relates to the original Punch-Out! arcade games themselves. They were fitted with two TV monitors, as seen here, this is likely due to the excess of extra monitors Nintendo of America had available to it prior to its launch, and used them more as a gizmo, than a necessity. The other interesting factoid I liked about this game was, that it underscored to Nintendo how much players really enjoyed facing off against one another in a multiplayer game. 
the origins of Punch-Out! can be easily traced, and thanks to the release of the arcade version on Nintendo Switch more people are now aware of it. Genyo Takeda was at the helm of the 1983 arcade game, which came hot on the heels of Donkey Kong's overwhelming success. And as previously noted, it made use of two screens, which we believe could be a spiritual precursor to the Nintendo DS, but this one was a bit of a necessity, you see after Donkey Kong, Nintendo had too many screens, so they made a game to use two of them in one machine. It's also been established that Nintendo had signed up a whole bunch of boxers, included at that group was Mike Tyson, but before he gotten to become heavyweight champion, so, it was a no-brainer for him to lead the franchise once he achieved fame. So let's head back over to the star and focus of our show, and see some representative gameplay. As we join round 1, we see its game mode A, the single player option, the player on the left of the screen is the computer, it has only 2 energy bars, versus the player on the right who has 5, both these values are shown in the yellow section of the screen. The pink section in the middle originally started out as 50 points each, but since then, every hit received, every step backwards, and every fall, has cost each fighter more points, and for clarity, the higher the points the better. The player to our right is clearly ahead of the computer at this stage, however, the computer is programmed to adapt to the player's skill level. With the computer player on the left hand side, having been knocked down to the canvas twice, but as of yet he's not been knocked out, so the fight resumes in the center of the ring, with his points down to about half what he started with. And the bell rings to end round 1. The score is 18 to 47 in favor of the player on the right hand side, let's see what round 2 will bring. The computer dodges the first few punches, but soon he begins to drop his guard and is once again on the defensive. He gets hit several times in a row, and with his falling back, step by step, he eventually goes down on the canvas, for the third time, with a residual score of just 11 points, but that's reduced to only 6 points when he rejoins the fight. So both players face off in the center, I can't help but to think, is this the end? Amazingly he's able to connect with the player several times, but suddenly he is hit hard and steps backwards, his score reduced to 0 points, but in true blockbuster style, he's actually saved by the bell, as round 2 ends and the fighters return to their corners. Well, I can't lie, this looks really bad for the computer fighter on our left, with absolutely no points remaining, he starts round 3. And I'm sure it'll come as no surprise, when he's quickly and effectively knocked out, he's definitely KO'd, and he's absolutely not getting up from this one, so the player wins this round. It should come as no surprise, that the case opening mechanism is heavily based upon the previous design used, in the multi-screen series of game and watches, with a near identical clasp used to secure the closed unit. And while these become fragile with age, they were an excellent design during this period. The only real re-release of today's game, was a homage version for the Game Boy Advanced, with the Game & Watch Gallery 4, or Advanced Gallery in Europe, way back in 2002, in which there was the classic version, and a modern reworking that included Mario and Luigi. And that nearly wraps up today's show, we'll finish up with a nice photographic montage of today's star in focus, the Game & Watch, micro vs system called Boxing. But also, please consider adding a big thumbs up, it is really appreciated, and remember, every episode needs those viewers endorsements, also think about adding an encouraging comment, that'll be equally awesome, or simply signing on to be a subscriber to this channel, but in all honesty, just joining me here today to share our show was fantastic, thanks everyone.